Hello, this video is on the wave equation. Now that we've learned how to build equations, we're going to build one for this unit. The essential question is what relationships and equation can we use to or create to describe and predict uh, waves. So quick little review of stuff that's covered several videos ago. Um, for each of our wave variables, you want to make sure you know what variables they depend on. Uh, so there's a handful of these variables that are independent. They don't depend on anything else. They're, they they just depend on the physical setup of the scenario. The velocity of the wave, it only depends on the medium that it's in. So no other variables make it. It just whatever material the wave is in determines the velocity. The frequency of the wave is going to depend on the wave source. So um, the person creating the wave, how many jiggles they put in every second, um, is the only thing that the frequency is going to depend on. The amplitude also depends on the wave source. It depends on how much energy the wave source decides to put into the wave. So those are kind of like the independent variables because they, um, they are based on the physical setup of the scenario. Then there's one variable that is dependent on these variables, and that is wavelength. So the wavelength equation depends only on the frequency and the velocity, as we'll discover here in a minute. The new wave equation that we're going to um, create is going to reflect these relationships. So the first step, of course, is to figure out what are the relationships so we can figure out an equation. Uh, and I have a little bit of a demonstration that I would like you to try at home. So what you should do is you should put your pencil on your paper and you start jiggling it straight up and down about one time per second. So a frequency of one hertz, up, down, up, down, once per second. And while you're doing that, you're going to pull the paper so sideways kind of slowly. This should cause you to draw a wave as the paper is going. Um, and you can label on your wave the wavelength, which is the distance between a crest and the nearest and the nearest crest. Now, underneath your first wave, do it again, but this time I want you to increase the frequency of the jiggling to two times per second. So you're going up and down two times per second instead of one. Uh, the tricky thing here is you want to pull the paper at the same speed you were pulling above. So no change in velocity, just changing the frequency. And then on your second wave, you want to label one wavelength as well. So what you should have is a picture that kind of looks like what we've seen above um, in the picture shown. We have the low frequency wave on the top with a long wavelength and the high frequency wave at the bottom with a short wavelength. Um, your experiment that you just ran should let you determine the relationship between frequency and wavelength. In general, there is an inverse relationship between the frequency and the wavelength. So the bigger the frequency becomes, or the smaller the frequency is, um, the bigger the wavelength. That was our first example. Or when you have a high frequency, we have a small wavelength. Another way to say this is the faster the wave source is jiggling, the closer together the waves are going to be. Now let's do a second experiment. This time, put your pencil down again on your paper and jiggle with a one hertz frequency. But as you pull the paper, I want you to gradually be pulling faster and faster and faster and faster. So this is like keeping the wave frequency constant, but increasing the velocity so the medium is changing somehow. And this time, I'd like you to label one wavelength on the slow side and one on the fast side to see how they compare. So what you should see is um, at the left side of this picture, right, if you label wavelength here, it's a very small value, the distance between the crest and the next crest, whereas when we're moving with a high velocity, the wavelength should be a big value. So if we wanted to analyze the relationship between velocity and wavelength, we see that there is a linear relationship between the velocity and wavelength. The lower the velocity that we were pulling, the, the lower the velocity the wave was moving, the smaller the wavelength, and the higher velocity, the bigger the wavelength. So another way to put this is a wave's wavelength will change when it goes from one medium to another. Every time we move from one medium to another, we're going to get a new wavelength because the velocity is changing. So for example, when a sound wave enters water from air, um, it actually goes faster through water, and that means that it's getting a higher velocity and the wavelength is going to be bigger. But that doesn't mean the frequency is changing because frequency is independent. It's, it depends on the wave source. So the, the wavelength gets bigger without the frequency getting bigger. It's kind of an interesting effect of this relationship. Okay, so we now have our two relationships. Um, and you should be able to now come up with a wave equation uh, for those two relationships. Remember, we start with our dependent variable on one side of the equal sign. So wavelength equals. And then we put the linear relationships on the top and the inverse relationships on the bottom. I'm going to ask you to pause the video for a second and see if you can figure it out on your own because that's a really important skill.
Okay, hopefully you're back from your pause. And if you did it right, you got this equation right here, lambda equals V over F, which is the wave equation. Let's solve a sample problem uh, using this equation. So a rock star sings a 50 Hertz frequency low note at a concert. The speed of sound in air is 340 meters every second. What is the wavelength of this sound wave? Uh, we're gonna talk a little bit more um, about in the next video about how to uh, set up and solve algebraic problems, but this is the general um, form that I would suggest that you take. Um, you make two lists, a list of the things you know, and uh, in this case, the, the variables that we know from the problem are frequency of the wave is 50 hertz, and we know the velocity of the wave is 340 meters every second. Then you add the things you want to know. We want to know lambda, which is the wavelength of the sound wave. Um, and then you're going to uh, identify your equation. At this, in this, We'll talk more about how to do that, but in this case, we only have one equation so far, so um, it's our wave equation. And then we're going to plug in the values. That means we substitute in the numbers that we know for the variables in the equation. So we have lambda equals 340 over 50. And then the last step is to plug that into your calculator and make sure you put units on your answer. Um, so don't forget the units on your answer. And we get our final answer of wavelength equals 6.8 meters. All right, let's run through one more sample problem. This is a conceptual sample problem. The rock star now triples the frequency of the sound wave that they're singing. Uh, which wave variables are going to be changing and by what percent? So we know that the frequency is tripling, that's given. Um, and the velocity depends on the medium. There is no mention of the fact that this sound wave is going into a different medium. It's probably in air the entire time. And that means that the velocity of the sound wave is actually not changing. Another thing that's not changing is the amplitude, right? It doesn't say anything about the amplitude. And amplitude doesn't depend on frequency. It depends on the wave source. So that's not changing either. The last wave variable is wavelength. And wavelength has an inverse relationship with frequency. So when the frequency triples, the wavelength goes down. One variable goes up, the other one goes down, and it's going to go down to one third of the original wavelength to balance out the fact that it's tripling. All right, please take a few minutes to revisit the essential question for this video, which was what relationships and equations can we use to describe and predict waves? So hopefully you now have a new tool in your toolbox, which is the wave equation. Um, and a new comic to consider as you uh, wrap up your notes. Thanks for watching.